Hi, I'm Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, here to talk about ankyloglossia or tongue tie. We're getting called all the time these days to see little babies with concerns of how well they're able to breastfeed. When you look under the tongue, everybody has a little flap, but sometimes that little flap goes closer to the tip of the tongue and limits how well you can move the tip. Other times, no matter where it is front to back, if it's too short top to bottom and it snags as you're trying to lift up the tongue, that can affect lifting, sticking out, getting a good contour on the breast and getting a nice easy suck. That can show up in a bunch of different ways. On the extreme end, it can mean the baby can't latch on at all. That's rare, but certainly we're gonna get called to see the patient in the hospital before they even leave. Most babies are able to latch on, but it might be a little bit more difficult. So in a baby that can't attain a decent latch, they may chomp and fight and bite to stay on, so it can be very painful with every suck and every swallow and every feed. Other times they pop off a lot, so feeds can be very inefficient. Certainly, even a shallow latch where they're not popping off, every little suck might transfer very little milk. That can show up as feeds that take forever, or feeds that take a normal amount of time, but the child's giving up out of exhaustion, not out of being full. That means the next feed is not gonna be that far into the future, so feeds that are really close together. Also, it may mean that you're spending a lot of calories trying to transfer milk, so you're not gonna gain weight as we expect. Additionally, you might notice some weird little clicky sounds with every suck. You might also be gulping a little bit of air if you can't get a good seal around the breast. So that may result in a baby who's much more gassy, burpy, belgy. Now, other variables that can affect how well feeding goes, everything from does the baby have a tiny mouth or a big mouth, good muscle tone, good muscle control. Uh, on the mom's side, we've inverted nipples, what's the milk supply like? And then there's the interface or the technique. All right, what's the positioning? What's the latch like? If you're tongue-tied though, it's something that you've got to overcome. Much like being shorter than everyone else for basketball, man, you're going to struggle. But you might still be the best player even though you're the shortest if you're athletic enough or work hard enough. But you've got to have something going for you to overcome that. Ultimately, much like basketball, there isn't a minimum height requirement. So it's not like you have to be six foot six or else you're not going to make the team. When it comes to the frenulum, we can break out a ruler. We can measure it from front to back, from top to bottom, but there's no measurement that guarantees success or failure. As a general rule though, if I'm seeing a baby that's struggling to feed and having some of the issues that I described earlier, and the tongue looks a little bit tighter or shorter or thicker than most, it might make sense to clip it. Thankfully, snipping that little band takes only five or 10 seconds. It can be done in the office with no medications. It hurts about as much as accidentally biting your cheek. Ow. Nobody likes it, but it's over like that. All the times you bite your cheek, you don't take antibiotics, you don't take pain medicines, you don't get stitches, you don't even go see the doctor. It heals fine. The mouth is very forgiving. It pretty much always heals without consequence. It does take about a week for a little ugly canker sore-like wound, little white, yellow, gray area, to reline with nice new pink skin again. But during that time, it's not dangerous, you don't have to worry about it. You can almost pretend like nothing happened. The one thing that I do recommend people do is that if we snip it and you don't move the tongue that much, it will completely reattach. In an older child or adult, I recommend doing little exercises to kind of stretch that out a few times a day to minimize that reattachment. Babies don't follow instructions. So generally what I recommend is reaching in under the tongue and doing a little lift. Three to four times a day is usually enough, but there's no upper limit, and you can stop once the area is relined and pink again with new skin. In newborns, I don't use any pain medications. Imagine if you're gonna accidentally bite your cheek and you know about it. Is it worth getting a needle poke and an injection? Generally, that hurts just as much as just getting it over with. And if we add a medication, then I've added risk because we have to worry about the rare possibility of side effects or allergic reactions to the medication. Snipping that little band does give you the ability to move the tip of the tongue better, but it's not gonna overcome any other issues. So if there are muscle tone or kind of athleticism issues, that's certainly not gonna change. But using the basketball analogy again, if you're short and clumsy, well, at least being tall and clumsy is easier. You might still have to work on your dribbling and your jump shot and your defense, but not as hard. In the same way, a baby that has better range of motion in that tongue 
isn't going to have to struggle as much with everything else. You might still need to work with a lactation consultant to work on the technique and the positioning and all those other things, but you're probably not going to have to work as much or as hard for as long. But not every frenulum that looks a little bit short needs to be cut. Sometimes you can overcome the issues by working on other aspects. So again, if you're working with a lactation consultant, perhaps trying a nipple shield or an SNS or some other type of device, you're changing your positioning, you might be able to overcome a little bit of a tongue tie. Another option when you have a tongue tie that's affecting feeding is to supplement with a bottle or potentially abandon breastfeeding entirely. At the end of the day, medically, as long as the child is able to gain weight and grow, you have options. I'll give you a story about a patient I saw a few years ago in the hospital, two day old with a slightly tight tongue tie and some trouble feeding. At that point, the baby couldn't even get a good latch for the colostrum. I had the whole basketball analogy discussion with mom, and she said, I think I, my nephew had something similar. Do you mind if I call my sister-in-law? She picked up the phone right then and there, called the sister-in-law, and they discussed, yes, the nephew had a tongue tie and difficulty feeding, had a painful latch and struggled through an entire year. But the sister-in-law said, you know what? I showed them, we toughed it out, it didn't need to be done, they kept telling me we should snip it. Then there was the discussion of, well, didn't the nephew need speech therapy? And yes, the nephew had speech therapy for a year. And sister-in-law again said, they kept telling me we should snip it, but we got through a year of speech therapy. He has no speech issues now. He's perfect. I showed them it didn't need to be done. Mom thanked the sister-in-law, hangs up the phone and says, holy cow, if we snip it, it might save me a year of pain and it might save me a year of speech therapy. Sign me up. Let's do it. A few years later, ultimately now, both kids are fine. Both kids are growing well. Both kids have no speech issues. So there isn't one way to manage it. There can be different paths. There's no way that I'm going to tell one of the moms that they're right or wrong. It's a personal choice. Now, in my story, I talked about speech. In a toddler, by the time you get to two, three, four, five years old, if you have trouble moving the tip of your tongue, it's going to show up a little bit like a lisp or clumsiness with certain sounds, especially uh, uh, it's not going to affect every single sound and every single part of expressive speech articulation, but it can have an impact. If it's from a tongue tie and we snip it, it absolutely will get rid of that one variable. In essence, it will make you taller, but if you're clumsy or non-athletic, you're still going to struggle with that. Snipping in a toddler is a little bit more difficult. It's still a super easy procedure that takes a few seconds but you're going to have to either strap them down in the office and kind of force your way into their mouth and potentially give them PTSD for any future dental visits, or you have to take them to the operating room, give them a little laughing gas. From a technique standpoint, people always ask, what instrument do you use? At the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. There's really nothing important in that little band. There's no major blood vessels or nerves. So you can use scissors, you can use a scalpel, you can use laser, you can use electrocautery. The tool or the instrument actually doesn't really matter. There's slight and subtle differences between them and you can argue and tweak the little pros and cons, but at the end of the day, it's such a minor procedure, it really doesn't matter. So no matter which tool that you use, you're basically trying to snip that band far enough that it dramatically improves the range of motion. And what you're left with is an open raw area that heals very well in a very short span of time. An ear piercing is more dangerous. A circumcision is astronomically a bigger deal. Everything in the mouth always heals well without any major issues. I hope this information was useful. I know that there's a lot of information out there about tongue ties or ankyloglossia and when it might make sense to cut the frenulum or that little band in a procedure called a frenulectomy or frenulotomy. Ultimately, if you have concerns, find a near nose and throat doc who's used to dealing with this issue and get evaluated. If you have any additional questions, please leave it in the comments below.